Middle school teachers, what is the cringiest thing you've seen a student do? Director of technology here, I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringy moment. Called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways, the other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school, so I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. Bear in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on her browser but not before I see full on. Hardcore. Yayo e hente. Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red and with visibly trembling hands she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion and the students stare in silence. I casually walked over to her and said, loudly enough for the classroom to hear, let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school guys. Her flush red face contorted with fear suddenly relaxed, her trembling hands stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes and curiosity. Dude, you saved that poor girl's existence. If people she knew found out about that and she got punished her for it, she would have wanted to die. This guy probably confirmed for this girl there is a merciful god. Good guy it. You're the bro Yayo he needs right now. Even if you aren't the one it deserves. This will be a story they tell their friends in like 10 years. The time I almost got expelled for looking at Hente. Valentine's Day and a boy brings a girl a dozen roses. They were both in my homeroom, so I watched this all go down right in front of me. I had literally never seen these two have a conversation before, either. Girl didn't know what to do with roses at 7am so she threw the roses in the trash can literally 20 seconds after it happened and went on her merry way. The boy never found out. We had this one kid in our 8th grade class stick his entire hand in a cake that was being passed around for a party. Grab a chunk and started eating it like a Neanderthal. It was chocolate and his face was covered. When he finished his chunk of cake with everyone looking in disgust he then proceeded to lick every finger. It was torture watching. He also ended up being the kid that threatened to blow up the school at the end of the year. If you have any way of contacting said kid tell him I said he's a cunt what kind if twisted human being sticks his hand into a cake. I had a kid carve his own name in his desk, but he couldn't figure out how we caught him. So what you're saying is that I should carve other kids names into the desks. A kid once wrote my name in a test and was baffled how we managed to find out it was him. He hated me, so he chose all the wrong answers under my name. Except it was in his handwriting. And he was the only one in the class who hasn't turned in a test. For his punishment, he kept the fake test as his grade. Around the 8th grade dance season, they call it prom. There is a whole lot of cringiness roaming the halls. One popular tactic among the boys was explained to me. We ask the girl to prom. And then we run away so she can't say number. I caught the student on Google search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong and my name is very common so I wasn't worried. I sent him home since it was an after school homework club and then went through the rest of the history which included boobs naked women Megan Fox nudes and Megan Fox panties. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what 
was happening and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Once a friend of mine described his quest as a kid breaking into puberty, trying to figure out porn. He described how he would google boobs and variable equivalents and not getting much. It was honestly the most relatable, and funny, story ever. He was telling it in spiritual life class. As I was learning about porn I didn't realize that female genitalia had a different name and I didn't know how to spell penis so I googled, female penis. I figure I would have figured some of that out at some point but I was a pretty stupid 12 year old. As a kid I knew what a vagina was but didn't know how to spell it. All my results in Google images were maps of Virginia. When I was 12 I googled 13 year old naked girls. My parents found out and were very upset. 12 year old me didn't quite understand what was wrong with the situation. I wanted to see older naked girls. A more innocent story, I was fixing the little girl next door's laptop. She shouldn't have a laptop and her grandmother doesn't monitor anything she does because she doesn't know computers. I decided to peek in her computer history since she was 7 or 8 at the time. I was curious what kids her age did on the computer. Most of it was super spammy sites but then I found a collection of how to prank call and what is Miley Cyrus's phone number. I was amused. There was always this kid that would go up to guys, shake their hands and he please sniff their necks. One day a teacher asked why he did this to guys and all he said was if I did it to girls it would be weird. That's pretty funny actually. There was a kid in my middle high school that would always touch and smell me a lot, saying he liked whatever detergent my mom used. I'm gay and he was good looking, so I didn't mind. I once offered a boy a My Little Pony color by number sheet. Ran out of Super Mario. The boy's response, Mr. I'm not gay. I'm a lesbian. I like girls. Oh my god when I was in 5th grade I can remember all the guys going around telling everyone they were lesbians, and their reasoning was because they liked girls. Saw a student write boy pussy on the whiteboard thinking nobody was looking. I was demonstrating convection, which included burning some newspaper. One kid piped up with HMM. That smells like incest. He meant incense. They were too young to get it, but I nearly died trying not to laugh. My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade, and since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name in lipstick. Okay, that's odd, but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book. Plus middle school. Then I see the name. Hun, who is our husband, without missing a beat. R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow threw up on him after having marathon sex with a unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark, glitter lipstick, nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself more wine. It's extremely well written gay porn featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. The kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. I had a student who would constantly butt into people's conversations, and when they asked him to mind his own business he'd stand up and proclaim nobody likes me. Everyone thinks I'm so annoying. Ha ha and he'd laugh while everyone awkwardly stared at him. Another kid literally told me one time that he would just act annoying so that he could impress a certain group of boys. They were not impressed. Nobody likes me. Everyone thinks I'm so annoying. Haha. <laughs> well, 
at least he's honest with himself. I had a 6th grade Olika book. He definitely tried to keep it on the DL. So he looked around, made sure no one was looking in his direction, and then licked the book. It was a tongue poke, then a full out lick up the spine of the book. Edit, a word. My name is Kid and when it's class, and when the group is study fast, and only teachers gonna look I pop my tongue I lick the book. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using PowerPoint. So there is a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at a screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation in the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a full folder of pictures of girls from his class he had downloaded from Facebook. That was kinda awkward. This has to be the most genuinely awkward thing I've read in this entire thread. My mom is a middle school English teacher. Once, a student snuck a bar of soap into her class, ate it, and proceeded to run out of the classroom and start vomiting. Apparently, he did it to impress his friends. One of the kids responded to questions like Pikachu. Shame that a good kid is going to look back on those days with absolute horror. Jokes on you. She never let anyone stop her from reaching her dreams, and now she's a Rachu. Edit, had to change some pronouns. I suppose she was old enough to have enough experience, but honestly she'd have been better off as a Pikachu. Edit, experience as in a decent model pool, shouldn't evolve a Pikachu too early. What, can you give us an example? because I'm not wrapping my head around this one. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years on my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had. Eighth grade science class. I ask the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says miss. There's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid drew a dick. I calmly tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say if you have something inappropriate in your book, please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's dicks in their books. Since they won't shut up about it, I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every. Single. Book. Had a huge dick drawn in it. All 90 something of them. Crudely drawn dicks. Artistic dicks. Squidward fucking Spongebob. You name it. It was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Edit. I can't believe I got my first gold for this stupid shit. Thanks Yarrow. Squidward fucking Spongebob. I am less than 15 comments into this thread and I'm already dying. But was there a turn to page 46, turn to page 78, you are gay, classic. I taught 4th grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years, she always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame. Until there was a line in the bathroom and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash can and peed four or five girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her. I once confiscated what I first thought was a note being passed in class, but turned out to be a gay fanfic one of my students wrote, pairing two of her classmates. A while back. One of my friends passed a note around to the class asking their favorite sins. All but one answer was of course masturbation or some other deviation of it. Our science teacher just looked up at our class and sighed. Everybody promptly burst into laughter. Edit. Forgot to mention that the teacher found the note. Peace. To the smart guy who thought this seemed far-fetched, it was probably more my friends who burst out into laughter and the teacher was a real a cool dude. 
My favorite was passing round a note with turnover on both sides. Teachers were never impressed. My favorite is when someone passed around a full-size sheet of paper that had can I borrow a piece of paper written on it. Edit. By full-size sheet of paper I meant an approximately 8.5 by 11 inches sheet of lined notebook paper. Comma and everyone touched everyone else's butts and lived happily ever after. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a fucking bitch in the middle of a science lesson. Then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at her wrong. In the dean's office she was so upset that she pretended to faint. Complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale. And then laid on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street, and said, Damn it Jennifer, we're not doing this again so evidently this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So, yeah, that was cringy. We get drug seekers who fake seizures a lot. This medic once told me about an adoc who pulled him over to the doorway after bringing one in and says watch this before saying loud enough for the patient, who was faking a seizure right there. I'm not sure if it's a real seizure because she didn't pee her pants right on cue she pisses herself. In my clinical rotations in a, watched a nurse, one of those 60 year olds, seen it all. No bullshit nurses that are awesome and terrifying. Break an ammonia tab under the nose of a PT who was brought in for seizures. PT jerks back. Nurse tosses the ammonia into a trash can with a condescending smile and says get the hell out of my before I call the cops on you again. It was glorious. PT was a known drug seeker in all ERs in the area. My favorite it when we say the doc is prescribing you something for the pain and they think they've won. Then we give them Toriddle. Complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale. Ah, the Almata salute. I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class we dissected a cow eyeball. The year before us, a student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish hard thing about the size of a peanut M&M. In his next class he stood up and swallowed it in front of everyone. Another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes. Ninja, Soldier, ETC, and staying character the whole day. I do not remember the details but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. In 6th grade science class, our teacher asked if anyone knew what the arms of an octopus were called and this kid immediately raised his hand and blurted out testicles everyone was laughing including the teacher, who also snorted. His face was so red. I forget which class this was, but in 10th grade, we were watching the 1980 film, The Elephant Man. Teacher asks class if anybody knows what disease the Elephant Man suffered from. I proudly and confidently yell out elephantitis. I never knew that elephantitis is associated with swollen genitalia. Everybody else did. I just thought the elephant man got his nickname because of having elephantitis. Holy shit was that embarrassing. Kid wore clothes to school with the price tag sticking out. When asked why I was informed that this was to let everyone know he was wearing new clothes. You should tell them that it doesn't really count unless you staple the sales slip to the front of your shirt. I just left middle school and I knew a group of kids who did shit like this. 
We live in a rural area and the kids had been there their whole lives loved doing shit like this to prove that they were hood. I always laughed because I'm from the hood and anyone who did shit like that would promptly get mugged. Got another one. A girl masturbated in class using the edge of the seat. Not discreet either as many of her peers had a WTF look on their faces. This girl was sweating hard. Seriously most uncomfortable office meeting and parent conference. I work for a private school. This middle schooler recently started dating another one. The girl decided to come to school in a black leather mini skirt and black leather tank top combo. At recess, which I watch because it's a small school, she was dancing all around in front of her boyfriend and hanging off the fence a la stripper. It was hilarious and so cringy. I had a student from a conservative Muslim family wear white see-through sweet pants with a visible black thong on underneath. She brought the clothes to school and changed in the bathroom before class started. We would get sent home from my high school if we got caught doing that, but yeah, lot of the Muslim girls found ways to do it too. She literally tucked her shirt into pants all the way over her ass. It looked ridiculous. High school English as a second language teacher here. I have many female students from conservative immigrant families who do the same thing. Sometimes they miss the bus home because they have to change in the bathroom between the final bell and the bus leaving. Not me, thank god, but my stepmom caught a kid masturbating during class. Had a kid that did this for the entirety of high school, and maybe middle school, in all of his classes. Anyone that sat near him was in what we affectionately called the splash zone. Edit. Holy gold Batman. There was this kid at one of the other middle schools in my district who was called Fast Hands. Fun times. I'm having a flashback to the time I was in middle school and we were watching a movie in science, and it's completely dark in the room, I decide to scan the room to see who's actually paying attention, barely anyone, only to see the weird kid with his hand in his pants, staring at the science teacher. Literally the same thing happened in my science class in 8th grade. I noticed because others kids were laughing about it near me. I was horrified. One student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingler Barry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she still seemed confused. So she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps, evidently she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience, and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Didn't you know, truck drivers just have this huge obsession with novelty postage marks, and the only way that you can get some of their exclusive items is to blow them out the window so that they think they lost them on the trip. Otherwise, they get incredibly upset and will stop at nothing to find them. OMG I've done this. I'm a voracious reader and in 4th grade I was reading a book. I totally forget the plot, but it had the word lesbian in it. I, for some unknown reason since I'm a quiet kid who wouldn't normally talk to the teacher, walked up and asked her what a lesbian was. I don't remember her exact response but it was basically, I think you don't need to know. Stop reading that book. Edit. I think the teacher was just feeling awkward about it and didn't want to tell me if my parents hadn't already. Cause in her mind maybe my parents didn't want me to know or something. Also she, rightly, assumed that since the book featured lesbians, it must have at least a little to do with relationships and was probably inappropriate for 9 year olds. If I recall correctly, the book had tongue kissing and hints of sexual stuff that was waay too inappropriate for my little mind. In a similar situation, 
A teacher directed me to a dictionary. I found it an unbiased and clear source for all sorts of word discoveries. The most memorable being clitoris, complete with an illustration. Haha. <laughs> Once I asked my mom what a clitoris was, she told me to look it up in her medical dictionary. She was an EMT and a giant nerd. Not realizing it was illustrated, I was informed. She was embarrassed. We had a student who started going to each class he passed, leaning in the door and yelling mom's spaghetti and moving on. Now I'm self-consciously thinking of all the things I did that make me want to collapse in upon myself like a dying star. But see this is comforting to me to see how common embarrassing shit is in middle schools, makes me feel better about my own embarrassments. This is the most accurate description of what happens every time I reflect upon ages 21 and younger. Oh I just thought about another, they were talking about dank memes which were about band class BTW, I was told. Mrs. Confuzzle Deb don't look up dank memes okay. I told them that I had been on the internet since before they were born. Edit. I did not expect this post to be so popular. It's good to know that this thing that happened in my classroom has amused so many people. I was born into the dankness. I was molded by it. You merely adopted the dankness. By the time you found B, I was already a man. Tell me, have you ever heard the story of Mrs. Confuzzled Deb the Man? Number, I thought not, it's not a story an or me would tell you. It's a redid meme. Mrs. Confuzzled Deb the Man was a dank memer of middle school, so dank and so kill she could use the internet to influence middle schoolers. She had such knowledge of dank memes that she could even tell off prepubescence. She could actually tell those little twats to fuck off. The dank side of B is a pathway to many abilities some would consider edgy. What happened to her? She became so dank. The only thing she was afraid of was losing her memes. Which, eventually, she did. Unfortunately, she told Reddit everything she knew. Then UDA's metal switched her gender in her legends. It's ironic. She could save normies from bad memes. But not her gender. I was playing Mario Kart with my nieces a little while ago, and was showing no mercy, they were asking how I got so good, and I laughed and said I've been playing this game since before your parents met. I think they made some comment like yeah, teacher even had a MySpace, I said, um MySpace wasn't a thing until I was like in college, and they were like, there was a time before MySpace? They were legitimately shocked. There was the student who had his hands in his pants, moving his hand up and down almost to rhythm. That was cringy. I just stared at him in the eye till he noticed that I knew. And then he stopped. Edit. Storm became stared. I had one of those. He wasn't allowed to wear pants or shorts with elastic waistbands after a while. I also had one of those, any time he'd have to perform in front of the class, he would play some serious pocket pool. I had to have a serious chat with him and tell him what he was doing and ask him to focus on stopping it. I think he was so nervous that he didn't even know he was doing it. I organized an activity that was sort of like never have I ever but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say you're in my boat if, and whatever they say that is the same as you, you have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling because she just didn't said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified, since one, that's disgusting too. 
I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry and 3. How the hell do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this. I told her that she was to do a favor for me, and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period, and she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damage control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. They believed me, and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind that figured out what happened, and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally get on the phone and inform the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. When I had my period at school I was constantly paranoid about standing up and there being blood all over my chair. It happening while playing some kind of weird musical chairs is like some horrific nightmare. I'm not a teacher but in a school in my town there is a female teacher who forces the girls to clean the chairs up by themselves in front of the class if something like that happens. Girls there have it rough. That literally makes no sense. It's not like wet in your pants because you held it for too long. Menstrual flow isn't something you can control. Why punish them for something they can't control? I remember the day I started my period for the first time. I was in tears begging my literacy teacher to send me to the nurse because of the combination of cramps, blood, and migraine. And she refused to send me since it was the second to last class of the day. My last teacher said it was the last class and didn't send me. Thankfully I didn't bleed through and cramps did eventually subside but looking back, you'd think two young women teaching younger women would be compassionate enough to let me leave class. I feel like the type of teacher that makes you clean up your own period blood is the same type of teacher that makes you wait long enough that you piss yourself, i.e. an asshole. Not sure if this counts. Had a student projectile vomit in the middle of class. This is in middle school. Poor girl sat in the middle of the room vomit managed to get into the seats next to, in front of, and behind her own. Somehow, so much bath and so much shame in that little girl. But then she didn't want to go to the office. She just wiped off her mouth and wanted to stay. In 8th grade I had Dr. S for Algebra. She was infamously cruel and bitter and mean. Surely because she was a PhD teaching middle school, we thought. One day I felt really, really sick like, vomit imminent kind of sick. I asked Dr. S if I could run to the bathroom immediately but, bitch that she was, she said I was lying and just trying to get out of class. I was a straight A student who never, ever lied or faked anything in my life. I stayed in my seat as long as I could, until I couldn't hold it in any longer, at which I point I got up, ran to the door dr. s yelling angrily at me for disobeying and puked right outside her classroom, at which point, she shut the fuck up. I made sure to tell the principal it happened right outside the door because doctor. S accused me of faking and wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. This student spent an entire semester speaking in a Russian accent for an experiment. No one questioned him. First day back from winter break, he is back to talking normal. We were all incredibly confused and his parents ended up going to the superintendent about our school allowing bullying. A Korean guy at my high school randomly started talking in a British accent around junior year and kept it up until graduation. Sometimes he would talk in his normal voice. There was this guy in my HS who was born in England but moved at age 3. He would face in and out of the accent a lot, leading us to think it was bees. 
kinda became even more obvious when it'd get a lot stronger when a group of girls walked by. Guess he probably copied it from this video that was making the rounds a while back. Doesn't sound like he had the same result though. YouTube web page. That's crazy. I definitely think he would have been more appreciated if his audience wasn't 13-14 yo kids whose mantra as they know it is be real. We teachers thought it was amazing that we never caught him slip. Edit. Grammar. I teach history and let my students do a PowerPoint presentation on the history on anything. Some kid did the history of furries. He came to class wearing his fursuit. I teach high school now. Edit. And to the people saying he couldn't afford a fursuit. I didn't say it was a good suit. It was made by cheap local fabric and sew together by all the sewing skills he learned in Homeco. It was a patchwork mess. Poor kid was most likely bullied. This is why you stay a closet furry. I am not a furry by the way. But I go to anime video game conventions. So I get to see a lot of them and I do not judge. Oh Jesus. I gotta know how his classmates reacted. Did they pay attention or just start sneering immediately? I'm a fur and pretty active in the art community. But it's just common courtesy to not shove it in people's faces unless they ask you about it. Especially a captive audience god. It'd be like doing a presentation on the history of loping or anime or dating sims. Half were trying not to bust out laughing. The other half were staring at me hoping I would do something. I just stay silent and let the cringe roll. God it was so awkward. So you are a furry? Answer me this. How often do people go out in fursuits and interactive with non-furry people? I am asking because I have a fear of people in fur costumes. Not just furries but people in suits in theme parks. It is just so unnatural. I just want to know my odds of being scared by a furry till the day I die. Good for them. Honestly, kids in my old class would have given him hell right then and there. Hey, I actually have never seen a fursuit in person. I don't know anybody who owns one. Either, a decent looking suit is crazy expensive and a lot of work to maintain. So most furries don't bother with them. Some survey a few years back recorded that only like 10% of furs go suiting. A lot of us find fursuits creepy too. Actually, something about vacant, unblinking eyes and an exaggerated expression is just so hard to look at. I never liked those cartoony costumes at theme parks for that reason, either. And most of my furry friends feel similarly. We just get desensitized to them due to being in the community and seeing so many pictures of popular suitors. So, I don't know how common they are to see out in public. Sorry, if you haven't seen one yet, you've probably got nothing to worry about. I teach 8th grade. This student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So, one day, he finished his class walk early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out, loud enough for everyone in class to hear, look, girl's name. Are you gonna date me or what I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside? I see every other student in the room work through this. From shock to laughter to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. Thanks for asking though, TL. Dr. A kid asked his crush out loudly in front of the class only to be rejected. Former middle school teacher here. During state testing, 
I had a student who wet his pants, but didn't say anything, so he sat in a puddle of his own piss for several hours. I once did that in 4th grade it was because at the time it was an important test and I drank tons of water before that I asked the teacher to give me permission to go to the bathroom, and he refused I begged him and he still refused I couldn't concentrate so I pissed myself for the rest of that weird 30 minutes and actually did good on the test. The worst part is this was a good kid who wanted to do really well, so he drank coffee that morning. He already asked to go to the restroom several times, and due to testing protocol, would have to get an escort to go to the restroom. I'm pretty sure he pissed his pants and was too embarrassed to admit that it happened. I would have let him go if he asked though. Had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith, like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school crying religious discrimination if you told him otherwise. He would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice but he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days he'd wear an old denim outfit with high waters and denim vest over a denim shirt. I had him for science so he'd blurt out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with the periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico, who was also his cousin. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain. Something of equal value must be lost, that is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed that to be the world's one, and only truth. I'm surprised neither a friend, dad sibling, or bully told him to stop. A bunch of kids bought collared shirts so they could pop them like Nick Crumpton. After 10 years of middle school, I should had a novel's worth, however, so many years of middle school decimates your brain and as someone else said, middle schoolers are generally cringy most of the time. The kid who wrote Mrs. Charponette loves cookies on the board when he sincerely meant to write cookies definitely ranks high up there, though, we all cringe that day. Edit, guys, it didn't take me 10 years to finish middle school, I promise, only 9, seriously, I meant 10 years of teaching middle school, but I should have clarified because you all don't know me in real life, if you did, you'd know I love cockies and cookies. I agree with the desensitization that comes with being a middle school teacher, I've taught 8th grade for 10 years. I really don't have one cringe moment that really stands out, they just become part of normal life in an 8th grade classroom, sigh. Not a teacher, but in 7th grade biology we dissected rats, and the teacher warned that they might be juicy from preservatives, so I grabbed my dead rat, turned it over in the air and shouted you gotta squeeze the pudding out of it my lab mate fainted as brown juices poured onto the table. I am now an adult biologist who does not do quite the same stuff. Walked in bathroom because there was a commotion while my students were in there. This boy has his pants around his ankles, pointing at his junk with both hands, asking all passers-by, who wants to touch I said, student's name, pull your pants up, while shaking my head, and I walked out, he came out after with a bright red face, saying, Mr. Fingerlinger, I swear I'm not gay no need for a consequence, as he was embarrassed enough. Scratched their bed with a ruler inside their pants and then put the ruler back into the container of rulers. Kids pick their nose and usually eat what they pick while I'm teaching. I think they forget that I can see them while I'm at the front of the class talking. I worked as a BI in a high school last year and I saw this shit every single day. It was always the kid who picked on others who I always caught. I would shake my head at him and he'd get very agitated and scream. What and I usually just raised my eyebrow, 
One day he made fun of a very disabled student's attempt at reading his essay to the class. So when he pulled that what crap, I just, in a normal and very matter-of-factly voice, said quit eating your boogers in class, please, he was mad but he learned a lesson that day, but, to be honest, I hate booger flickers more, I've seen boogers land on other, innocent children. Not a teacher, but I interned with one recently, apart from the kid who insisted on being called Frisk, Undertale, I guess, but the craze had died down so it was just weird. There was one girl who wore a cat ear headband. Kinda cute, since they were the metal silhouette type that kids wear, but she paired it with a fucking cat tail. A big, black and white, furry cat tail. I, am in high school and know someone exactly like this she's crazy and smells bad and insists I am her best friend I hold both crest fear and hatred for this girl. Not a teacher but when I was in school those track pants with snaps down the side were popular. The boys would try to yank the pants off each other during class changes, and they all wore basketball shorts underneath. One day some guy thought it would be funny to rip off a girl's track pants, however she didn't have shorts on. Bright purple undies on show and the look of terror on that boy's face was hilarious. She just ran off and a friend followed with her pants. In high school my brother and I were both in theater. The other kids started a trend of pantsing one another, but one day they tried it on my bro. He was going commando that day for whatever the fuck reason and the entire backstage. I was up front building sets, got a view of his pale hairy ass. The trend withered and died that day. I had a student who would sit in the back of the classroom and pretend to master but while staring at me, I really did not want to have to get the principal involved for what I understood as extremely poor decision making in an attempt to impress his classmates but two instances was enough. I had to watch him tell his mother what he had done in horror. Just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because this student was placed in an advanced class, and chose to not learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well behaved, gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. When I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor, underneath the other students' desks. Now I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. This student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone. Especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Why did he not like you? I worked at a day camp for disabled kids and had one kid who was religious and stopped respecting the counselors he found out were gay or atheist. I started in the middle of the year. The student really liked the old teacher. I'm sure it had more to do with the student being upset about the other leaving than it did him her not liking you. Abandonment can be really tough for kids, especially depending on the district. This reminded me of the best math teacher I ever had. It was the 8th grade and he pushed me to learn and show my work. By December he sent me to the principal's office with a note. I was scared but didn't think I did anything wrong. Principal opened the note, read it, and then told me Mr. Brown says you are the most improved student in his class and one of the best students he has. Good work. I almost cried in relief and I was genuinely moved by this teacher that seemed to be so hard on his students, saying something good about me, a nobody. Last time I saw Mr. Brown, he was yelling for our basketball team and seemed really into it and disappointed when we lost. 
I'll always remember him behind his desk being tough on his students and yelling during that game. When we returned from Christmas break we had a new teacher, Mr. Brown killed himself alone, in his car on the side of the road over the, the holidays. Kid in a fedora offering high fives in the hallway, but then dapping just before the other person's hand made contact. It was supposed to be a prank for a vlog. I had a couple of marker player fangirls a couple years ago that just gave me the heebie jeebies. Group of about 20 kids that run up and down the halls shouting about memes. One of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with So, do you know the? Insert obscure meme, while making Earth Day post as one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees. There were several I love trees on it, Earth Day was on 4 stroke 22 so he also wrote the first two with a swirl at the end so that it looked like he'd written 4 stroke 20 but it just looked like 4 stroke 202. I probably should keep the list, but they happen so often I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Not a teacher, there was this girl who liked the popular athletic girl, she liked her a little too much, she made a slideshow and presented to the whole class, felt kinda bad. One of my mother's students took a whole pizza in the box out of her office and just started eating, when told to stop and put it back he licked the rest of the pizza and asked if he could have it. She said no and told him to throw it away. He started arguing that it was better in his stomach than in the trash. My mom was furious. She should have gone full Forest Whitaker on him. You think a little spit is gonna stop me? You really think a little spit is gonna stop me? Oh man, you really think a little spit is gonna stop me? Not a teacher but I had a classmate on a field trip rub mud all over his clothes and body so he could go home. Turns out his mom's car broke down and she couldn't pick him up. He had to wear his muddy clothes for the rest of the trip. One of my best friends ate a couple of slacks so she could go home early one day in high school. Except she had locked her keys in her car, and her dad couldn't pick her up until like 6 that evening and none of us wanted to give her a ride home while she was pooping her guts out every few minutes. Rachel, if you're editing this, I love you, but this is still one of my favorite stories to tell. My friend and I got busted on day one of 8th grade social studies passing a crude drawing of a classmate if I was getting spit roasted by two large dicked men wearing party hats. I didn't think the teacher looked at it until I got summoned to the office during next period. The principal unfolded the drawing and says to us, Can you boys explain to me what this is? I knew I was fucked. My friend reaches over the desk and grabs it, holds it close to his face like he's scrutinizing it and says to the principal, It looks like a picture of classmate having sex with two large men and I think they are wearing party hats. I fucking lost it. My friend got expelled midway through that year for threatening to kill the principal during math class. Not a teacher, but an illiterate girl was doing a presentation on the country in Nigeria. Yeah, I think you guys can guess how she pronounced it. This brings back memories of reading a paragraph aloud from a textbook in 5th grade about the Niger River, and, yeah I didn't pronounce it right. This reminds me of a report I had to give on a famous person in the 3rd grade. I chose Jesus, opened the presentation by giving his full name, Jesus H. Christ. Apparently, all the other kids in the class knew better, because they scoffed in shock and tried hard to suppress laughter. We weren't churchgoers at my house. Not a teacher, but when I was in 8th grade this girl sent a video of her chugging vodka, which was clearly just water in a vodka bottle, and then sucking on a banana to another boy in her class. He then sent it to a bunch of other people and it got passed around. It became the talk of 8th grade, and her mom soon found out because she worked at the school. 
when I was in 6th grade science class, one of my classmates had to do an oral presentation in which she needed to say the word organism frequently. She said orgasm every single time. The few students who caught on were melting in their chairs with bright red faces, and the teacher was trying so hard to hold back his laughter that tears were streaming down his face. In high school biology, I kept saying dominant submissive rather than dominant recessive. Oh my god that happened, but this was last year in high school. We were talking and doing presentations about invasive species. A girl who did her project alone stood up there began to say, this species is causing damage to other organisms. But instead of organism, she said orgasm and immediately clasped her hand over her mouth. Everyone, including me and the teacher, just all burst out laughing. I taught middle school in an East Asian country, for some reason. Boys have a lot of built up sexual energy, frequently saw groups of boys dry humping each other up to four deep, a lot of times they would just be chilling near the soccer field after lunch sitting on each other's laps doing some subtle mini thrusts. I asked them what the hell they were doing once and they all got super defensive. Oh my god. You've reminded me of a repressed memory from middle school. The douchy jock guy who was really foul to everyone had a weird thing with this little Vietnamese kid who was generally well liked but incredibly dorky. Our math class in 6th grade had been bags in the middle of the room, which we were allowed to lounge on once we finished our work. Often, the whole class would finish at least 5 or so minutes before the end of class and Douchy Jock would take advantage of this time by kicking someone else off a beanbag to sit on it and pull this Vietnamese kid on top of him and like wrestle spoon him the rest of class. The little guy loved it because he thought he was fitting in but it was so insanely awkward for everyone else, who just saw this obviously repressed jock guy feeling up another dude and rubbing his dick against him. If I recall correctly. The beanbags disappeared towards the end of the year. Teacher in Korea here I also caught four boys on top of each other doing the humps I approached them, and they're like, teacher no not gay military style military, okay. Not a teacher sorry to be that person. In middle school, my friends and I were not in the popular crowd, but one of my friends had a huge crush on the most popular boy in school, who was also a major asshole. So one day, she brought him a bouquet of flowers and a heart-shaped box of chocolates. She brought the gift to him before school where he and his douchy friends hung out and asked him to be her boyfriend. I happened to be nearby and witnessed the whole thing. They laughed and laughed at her until she ran away crying. Despite riding the same bus as her, I never saw her again that school year. I saw her that summer since she lived nearby and she told me she transferred schools because of the incident. Poor girl was brave enough to give it a shot. Just to be literally laughed out of the school. Ouch. I never realize why people are so fucking evil. It's so bad that sometimes you get shit for not being mean. I mean come on. Really? Kids are essentially sociopaths and you couple that with peer pressure. Voila. I taught 5th grade recorder class as part of general music. So every kid had to play them for a quarter. It was fucking awful. 15-20 kids half of whom were budding criminals, playing out of two non-plastic recorders. I was in the middle of bitching them out yet again, when I heard what sounded like a sneeze combined with a squeak. I look over, and the dumpiest, runkiest boy in the class, the gross kid if you will, had sneezed with his recorder in his mouth, and proceeded to blow clear snot through it, and onto his fingers. He sat there for like 15 seconds dumbfounded, with that orange clear plastic recorder hanging out of his mouth. Finally I told him to just put it on the table. A few minutes later, I accidentally knocked it on the floor, 
and it broke. Justifying my throwing it away after class, I bought a new one at the 99C store, because I was not giving that damn thing to anyone else. I have had a 12 year old student, with a dirty face and hands lick his hands to figure out if the brown was chocolate pudding. It wasn't, to be fair. He regularly ate a pudding cup without a spoon as kids tend to do. I did not eat lunch that day. To be fair, eating pudding without a spoon is something a toddler does, not a 12 year old, to be fair had one super scrawny kid try to make fun of another super scrawny kid for having no muscle. It's funny they say middle school kids are crazy cause they are hitting puberty, but it is always the underdeveloped kids who are a real pain. First off, I'm not a teacher, however I had an interesting classmate in middle school. In the middle of English class during a test the teacher gave out the loudest scream I have ever heard. Everyone looks over to see this kid with his dick in his hand. He had started jerking off in the back of the class and the first person to see was this poor old teacher. Whoa for a bit there I thought he had detached his dick and was holding it with his one hand showing it to the teacher. Kid tried to outgross his peers to help him fit in, which normally works. Problem was his delivery said things like I like your dick and I bet your dick tastes like ice cream and guess what I love ice cream. Maybe he liked dick, I'll never know. A male student approached me, appearing uncomfortable and panicked. He proceeded to tell me that he had heard that too much masturbation could cause you to run out of semen and you would never be able to have kids. He was genuinely terrified that this is what would happen to him. Not a teacher, but when I was in middle school I did all sorts of cringy shit. Asked my crush if I could use her shoulder as a pillow. Tried running with my arms in front of me in a cone more aerodynamic engine, and more. This may not be what you mean by cring beast, but it made me cringe. I'm a middle school teacher, and a boy in my homeroom, I'll call him Zeke was way behind in social development. As a favor, I gave him tips about getting along with people. I told him one good idea was to say nice things about them. So the next period, he picked up a little statue that a girl in our homeroom had made in art, and he said that's a real nice figure. She shrieked at him, Zeke, put that down, you'll break it then she grabbed it out of his hand, glared at him and stomped off. He slunk away and probably never talked to anyone again. Not a teacher but was a student. One of my classmates had a history presentation. He screamed at the top of his lungs. Nobody had any fucking clue what that meant. Everyone was staring at him while he was just smiling scanning the room and slowly started to realize no one knew what he said. His smile quickly went away and he began his presentation. Wait, there are people that don't know about Leroy Jenkins? I feel old now. These two girls were doing a Spanish project in which we had to make a superhero and describe it in Spanish. They named it Raleigh Reed. Two 8th grade boys invented their own language which involved anime like giggling. Funny thing, these two were jocks with decent social status. We had so many parent meetings about how their son's giggling was disruptive in class. The parents were mortified but the boys wouldn't stop. This is my favorite. Somewhere in an undergraduate business degree I hope they are still getting core emojis with it. I was showing a movie once, and this girl and boy were sitting in the back, next to each other in a table where two people could sit. Anyways by the middle of the movie I see the kid has his two hands on the table and he is looking away with his eyes wide open while the girl has her hands under the table and is slightly moving. I knew right there and then. She was jerking him off. I went discreetly and stood behind them just to confirm and yes she was. When I tapped her in the shoulder, 
I guess it was the adrenaline. He came, in her hands. The two students in front of them saw everything happen. They were news for about two weeks and the entire school knew. They are in high school now and still dating. One time in middle school I came to school with my face painted like a lizard with green eye shadow. If you see this from one of my teachers in the comments please let me know so I can kill myself. I'm a male teacher. I once confiscated a note being passed between 6th grade girls. It turned out it was a list and they ranked all the boys in the grade in terms of attractiveness. I didn't really look at it but later I showed it to my team and they pointed out that my name was number 4 on the list. When I was in middle school we had this dress as an animal day and all the other kids did stuff like wear a raccoon hat or cat ears but I was different I decided to go in a skin tight how to tame your dragon costume and the worst part about it was that the yearbook committee dedicated an entire fucking page to me in that shit costume. I was a volunteer lifeguard at a middle school for part of the year. This school also has a swimming month in the gym classes, where students must wear bathing suits bought ordered via financial aid at the uniform store. There was a highly overweight girl in one of the classes, and she didn't seem to be aware of the standard issue bathing suits. The gym teacher sent home reminders the week before, but I guess she forgot. This girl was picked on a lot in general, and always kept to herself. She was very shy. She never spoke. If you called on her to answer a question in front of the class she would get teary. On the first day, the other students showed up wearing the uniform bathing suits. But she was wearing her bathing suit from home. It also wasn't a particularly pretty bathing suit. As it looked very old ladyish and had a bright orange Hawaiian shirt type of pattern. She stuck out which you could see in her body language really bothered her. The gym teacher ended up calling her out in front of the whole class, giving her a lecture, and giving her a detention for not wearing her uniform, because that was the rule. Her face turned bright red, and she just stood there silently while other kids stared at her and giggled. You could tell that she wanted to cry, and that her soul had just crumbled. The lecture went on for a very long time. This was a gym teacher who didn't like it when students disobeyed the rules. I was sitting off to the side, wringing my hands and bouncing my knee in second-hand embarrassment. I wish she had just read the reminder. Poor sweet child. Always read the reminders. Not a teacher, but when I was in grade 9, my grades weren't the best. On the day of the big graduation ceremony, they came and told me I didn't have enough credits to graduate, but they are passing me anyway because I just barely squeaked by. I thought, great, I made it so I went along with my classmates to the ceremony. So there we were, a group of about 300 kids in rows and rows of chairs on one side of the gym and all the parents and families of the kids on the other side. They started calling up the kids one by one to receive their certificates, and once they were called up, they all stood on these bleachers at the back of the stage for a big photo at the end of the ceremony. So the rows and rows of chairs we were in, slowly emptied out as the names were called, one by one. Then when they got to my row, my name wasn't called. The guys on each side of me got called, but not me. Finally, the very last kid was called up, and there I was still sitting there, all alone in the middle of this vast layout of empty chairs in the gym. People were staring, whispering, pointing. Guess that kid didn't graduate, must be a real dummy. I never felt lower in all my life. I wanted to run out of there. But I was too scared to draw even more attention to myself, so I just sat there. I still cringe to this day when I think about it. On the bright side, I was able to walk out of that hellacious school, with its abusive teachers and bullying students, for the very last time. We were doing a project involving postcards in the Silk Road. 
which I was hanging in the hallway. Some kid wrote the postcard out, and used it as an opportunity to include a part in the letter asking a girl classmate to the upcoming dance. He came to me and asked if I could make sure his letter was at eye level on the bulletin board outside my classroom for her to see. At that moment, every dumb thing I have ever done to impress a girl had flashed before my eyes. I could only imagine the congregation of his classmates outside my class reading this note and never letting him live it down. I wanted to spare him, but I figured my job was to educate, not shield him from how cruel the world can be for passionate people like ourselves. I ended up obliging. I managed to catch her reaction by chance while I was still putting up the bulletin board display. The look on her face when she read it was awfully WTF, and she did show a friend. But everything went better than expected for the kid. She agreed to go to the dance with him and that was the end of that. I'm sorry I don't have a better ending. Not a teacher, but when I was in middle school a group of kids would snort hand sanitizer to get high. This was also in the middle of class. Eventually our teacher called them and said you can't get high off of hand sanitizer. Good times. We don't really have middle school here but I was substitute teaching an 8th grade science class where they had to dissect flowers. I had lab assistants, which was fortunate as I'm not a science teacher. I was surprised when a kid in the first class ate one of the flowers. I was probably more surprised when another kid in the second class ate one of the flowers. I had a student who created a fake text now email account and emailed my school email to proposition me about staying after school and teaching him a grown up lesson along with some very colorful language. I promptly reported it and replied back that I was not interested in this whatsoever and he used the classic age ain't nothing but a number line. I turned it into the police and it stopped but to this day I have no idea who it was. I teach middle school math. The dabbing after answering a question correctly on the board got old really fast. Of course one kid insisted that it was funny every single time and it was so hard to watch. But I had to let him keep doing it until the other kids put him in check and he realized he looked like an idiot. Also, I had a 6th grader who had an extreme crush on an 8th grader. At the end of the year he gifted her massage oils with a creepy note and she reported it to the administration. Then on the last day of school he tried to steal the class picture I had with her in it and a student caught him. I tried to defuse the situation but the kids figured it out. He didn't hide his obsession very well. He was in my homeroom this past year and I always made sure my picture was there before I left for the day. He also asked me if he could have an assignment of hers I kept as an example for a project. One day he asked me how much a plane ticket cost to China. She was an international student and went back there for high school. And I told him it would be a little strange for him to visit someone halfway around the world who did not feel the same way and wasn't expecting him. He told me I was being disrespectful. Basically, everything Paint Chips did was cringy, but I'll tell you why I referred to him as Paint Chips. One day out of the blue in my silent classroom he says out loud, Has anyone ever eaten paint chips? Some of the students looked at him with the usual contempt, but no one answered as was their custom. He then adds, Because I have, it explained a lot. Edit, just to clarify, paint chips was talking about pieces of dried paint that chip off the wall or building. He was a very odd kid but I'm not sure if he was eating lead-based paint. I have witnessed a female student openly mocking and pointing at a teacher outside at recess during winter. The student was laughing at the teacher because she was wearing sunglasses in the winter. Minus 20 Celsius. Why would you wear sunglasses in the winter? Question mark. She thought sunglasses kept the heat off your eyes face. Definite face palm moment. 
I had a kid who had guinea pigs at home and would make guinea pig noises to express his emotional state. For example, the lights are turned off as we are about to watch a short science film. The class is fairly silent. Him. Weak. Weak. Me. What are you doing? Him. I'm saying weak because that's what guinea pigs say when they are scared. The damn kids with their damn fidget spinners chanting let's go on 9 gag. Oh my god. Maybe maybe the atomic bomb wasn't the worst thing that could happen to humanity. I say we drop the rest on fidget spinner factories in the 9 gag headquarters. You know those kids who always self-diagnose and if there's a mental issue that they hear being talked about they'll claim to have it? Well I'm not a teacher but during mental health week, all we would do in science is talk about different mental issues that teens usually have and how to deal with them. One day the teacher read a list of mental problems, explained how they affected people and what it does. But this kid obviously didn't understand what some mental issues were and it was the most cringy thing I've witnessed. ADD. Oh yay. I'm like that all the time. OCD. OMG that's totally me. Autism. Wow I can actually relate to that so much. To be clear. He was no way autistic just an attention whore. Lots to choose from. But probably the autistic. Booger eating boy confessing his love for the popular, athletic girl at lunch. Took a lot of courage, but it was not the best move. Not a teacher, but this one kid had a survival guide for middle school. Kept on talking like there was a camera in front of him, too. Was that the same kid who skipped half of his classes that year to hang out with his friends and the janitor? Yeah. There was also some kid who I think had some sort of nuclear arsenal in his anus. His launch code, if I remember correctly, was toot toot. It's all fun and games until you hear that record scratch followed up by you might be wondering how I got into this situation. The kids who act like they need fidget spinners to focus. You've been fine all year, you don't need one now you little shit. It's only a matter of time before they get banned and go the way of slap bracelets. Not a teacher, but in middle school, these kids were playing truth or dare with this kid. We'll call him Dylan. Someone would say dare and it'd be sometimes like I dare you to force Dylan to eat his homework in front of Mrs. Smith or whatever. Well it got to Dylan and he said dare. They ducking dared this kid to ask to use the restroom, rip off pubic hairs from his balls, come back with them, and eat them and he fucking did. It was so disgusting and word spread quick and that followed him even until now. Graduated and living his own life and shit. He will still get called this when someone from school sees him. I saw him one day at the store and heard, puby. How the fuck are ya man at him and I was fucking mortified for him. Okay so I made a throw away for this. I'm not a teacher but the cringe student. So I was in my 7th grade science class and my teacher, Mr. O, was preparing a lab experiment for us to observe. The entire process took a bit of time. So while grabbing all the materials and experimenting, he asks the class to tell a joke, I'm sitting beside my best friend, and he whispers a joke into my ear, and I laughed out loud, Mr. Oh hears this and asks you yikes my bad do you have a joke you want to share not thinking twice, I respond want to listen to the joke, Mr. Oh, yes, I respond women's rights, the classroom goes silent. And my friend who the initially told me the joke laughs the fuck out loud. Mr. O responds after a few moments of more silence. Want to hear a joke? You yikes my bad getting a girlfriend. I still lose sleep over how embarrassed I was by this and that I would ever make a statement like that. I just imagine the class just being a mixture of shock and in hysterics when the teacher said that, I think I would be out of my chair.
laughing so hard, sorry, dude. I was a sub for middle schoolers in Florida and they beat and stole from another kid in my face and told me to fuck off, kids are animals, people are animals to be fair. Florida middle schoolers are especially wild, in high school I rode a bus full of them and they were absolutely vicious to each other, got worse every year. Substitute teacher here, saw a kid bang her head against the wall to attract attention when I couldn't help her at once, did it repeatedly and harder until I helped her out, also a teacher low-key flirted with a 9YO girl, edit, I get why so many asked so here's a bit more details on the second part, let's call the girl Sarah, the teacher asked her stuff like if she had put on makeup only for him. She had dry lips and only had lip balm or whatever it's called, and had his hand on her shoulders when standing behind her and talked to her. When Sarah asked for his help he whispered some stuff in her ear. I am guessing advice because he never told her some helpful stuff like he did to the rest. She didn't seem bothered but I was. I guess Sarah could be a relative but I never asked. I was a bit creeped out. I have no evidence so I can't really call the cops but I hinted it to another teacher. So many cringy moments happen in middle school I've caught students masturbating. In class or in random places around the school when I'm making my duty rounds. Overheard my students telling their losing virginity stories at 12-13 years old. Mind you. Some things I can't say because incidents are protected by our NDA, usually involving a special ed kid. The stinky kid in class being told he stinks to his face by the other classmates and he wasn't understanding it because he couldn't smell his own stink. There are a ton of these moments. The 1st of April, 2011 a teacher came into class and announced she was pregnant. Students stood up and yelled I knew it to which the teacher responded, April Fools. The student ran to the bathroom for about 20 minutes. Oh god, so many of these at a shit show of a Catholic school, 7th grade, sweetest most innocent girl asked me what a G-spot is, I'm a guy, I said I didn't know, that's partially true. Walked in on a bunch of kids vaping in the bathroom while talking about how shitty of a teacher their English teacher was. I had fun with that one. One of the students had to give a presentation on an interest of theirs, part of an essay, and she went on a long tangent about fencing and all the, I think, more well like children laughed at her. She left the room in tears and I felt so so bad I just wanted to kill those kids. Little Korean kid stole vodka from his parents to seem cool and brought it into school in a water bottle. The kids drank it and ratted on him immediately. Sorry Kenny. And perhaps the best was when this emotionally disturbed kid, this was actually when I taught fifth, got pissed about something quite trivial and threw his desk in a show of retired strength then ran out of the school and was asked to leave the following day. When I was in middle school, the big thing to do on the weekends if you were a cool kid was to attend the Catholic Youth Organization, SIO, dances at one of my town's four parishes. That parish was St. Jude's. I went to public school like many other attendees from both in and out of town did, but anyone who paid the $5 entry fee was allowed into the dance. The parish made a killing off of those dances and off of all of the hormonally charged preteen shenanigans that went down within those holy, hallowed walls of St. Jude's deteriorating gym. The gym was so bad that even after they ripped out the soggy and cracked wooden floors, the tiled court that they put in was so shitty that you could pull up some of the tiles with your finger. Whenever I played basketball in that godforsaken gym I had to pray to God that I wouldn't slip on a tile shifting below my feet or step on a piece of gum or a speck of some junior high schooler's bodily fluid from the dance the night before. The place was skeevy as all hell but it was all we had in those days so no one cried too much about it. Whether there was rain, sleet, snow, 
or toxic sludge pounding down on us from the heavens, we would, without question, show up for those dances every Friday night during the school year. Every single bit of youthful degeneracy and infantile indiscretion could be found at St. Jude's on Friday nights. Friday nights at St. Jude's, affectionately dubbed the whorehouse on the hill by the kids, could make a coke. Fueled night at Studio 54 back in the 70s look like Tuesday night bingo at the retirement community just down the road from the parish. There was simply nothing that the chaperones, all moms from the parish, could do to stop the spaghetti strapped girls from performing some sort of bizarre, hip hop infused mating ritual with the boys who all were convinced that if they just wore more quicksilver and billabong t-shirts from pax on to go with their open parker shell necklaces they would eventually fend off all of the competition from the other dance goers and land themselves the coveted job of apparel model at our local mall's pax on store i may or may not be joking about that if you manage to grind it out with Casey or Kelly to the booming sounds of Usher or Lil John on any given Friday night, you would be the man for the rest of the upcoming week. If you manage to then get with Casey, Kelly, or both fine young ladies at the dance in one of the bathrooms or away from the prying eyes of one of the more puritanical parish parents chaperoning then you would henceforth shed your title as the man in the center the throne of flyness as the lord of the dance, conqueror of all Casey's, Kelly's, and Courtney's. Years after those wild middle school nights sat and Jude's were gone. Some knob jockey decided to complain to the school about the dances and how there was so much awful and degenerate behavior going on. Somehow they got our local paper and then our city's magazine to write about the infamous dances and once the word got out around our county and some calls were made to the holy head on shows who ran the school and the parish, the dances were shuttered forever. Word got around to us dance alumni who had long moved on to college and beyond about the dances being shut down and we all reminisced with each other about just how crazy, fun, and critical they had been to us and for our development as teenagers and kids growing up. Not long after the dances were shuttered, dwindling enrollment and financial troubles within the Archdiocese and the Church meant that St. Jude's had to close their Catholic school and all hope that those dances might be revived for a new generation of kids from our town and all over the county was gone for good. I've been to bad mitzvahs, house parties, high school dances, bachelor parties, and weddings since middle school. Until this very day nothing has compared to those nights at St. Jude's with my childhood friends. I'm not sure anything ever will. When I was in high school a girl in my class gave a presentation on fencing. It went on for two days because the whole class found it real cool and we keep on asking her questions about it. I was in middle school 13 years ago. I am a tiny person now. So I was really a tiny person then. The girls around me developed way quicker than I did and to make up for this, I decided I would start stuffing my baby training bra with meticulously molded toilet paper wads in place of boots. Seemed pretty legit. Minus the fact that I magically sprouted bee cups overnight. No big deal. Fast forward to walking with my science class through our quad and one of them falling out without me knowing. I only realized it when I turned around and a group of boys had picked it up and were examining it 13 year old me wanted to die. Incredibly camp 14 year old boy did an 11 minute Lady Gaga dance routine wearing a kimono, 5 scarves and 3 pairs of sunglasses, 1 feathered while holding a fan. He then revealed to everyone that he's gay. Not one of the 150 middle schoolers present were in the slightest not surprised. Should add that everyone was incredibly supportive and were much more enthusiastic about his sexuality than the length of the medley. It was a very loving group of students. I'm terrified that one of my old middle school teachers happens to have read it. 
My friend used to always do stuff with carrots during lunch to annoy me. He'd peg me with them. Put them in my food and drinks, in my bag and folders, in my jacket or other pockets. Have other people do those things, etc. He also had a thing for poking my other friend. Just poking him. I still think I was worse than him though. E. They were baby carrots not regular carrots. He'd peg me with them right there in the classroom no candle lit dinner no loop. Not a teacher. When I was in middle school though, guys would pull their dicks out in class and shake them around. Not just once. It was a back and forth between several different people. I'm not a teacher, but this is cringer worthy. My friend got a call from her 14 year old son's teacher. She and his dad were to meet with the teacher and the principal before their son could return to school. No excuses. The kid had been jerking off in class, in the front row of the classroom. He always wore sweatpants. He refused to wear anything else, even though he never played a sport a day in his life. The teacher explained that she had noticed him doing this, and dismissed the class. She said she told him she was going to erase the chalkboard and he better be gone when she turned around. He was, but that was only one incident. There had been three others. He got detention, and was banned from wearing anything but jeans to school for the rest of the school year. Since school was over in three weeks, they allowed him to stay, but he had to go to the principal's office for his classes. At the end of the school year, he was expelled. They ended up putting him in a charter school. Summer camp counselor here. Names have been changed to protect the innocent. Samantha found it hilarious to scream roasted at inopportune times. Such as upon learning someone's pet bunny died or when a kindergartener fell on her face and knocked a tooth out. Teller wrote fan fiction. Weird. Weird fan fiction. In one of them. Diamond Tack from Fahrenheit 451 was fucking Elizabeth from Bioshock. A big daddy was involved. She would read these loudly and publicly. Samuel enjoyed telling people how much he balls and sexes. According to him, he has sexed with 200 girls, and all of them have humongous boobies. He claims he has sexed Kira Knightley, Taylor Swift and Emma Watson. This list grows longer daily. Lily says that face though a lot and at completely random moments. It's unclear whether this is intended as a compliment or an insult. She also really likes Beyonce to the point of obsession. Tom has a fidget spinner collection. He doesn't ever actually use them, just proudly shows them off. He claims one of them cost $22.50. This is treated like it is $1,000. Amanda likes to attempt to twerk. She also tells everyone about how she wishes she could get pregnant because she's ready to be a mom. Amanda is 13. She also has no idea how sex works. Seeing as she seems to think pregnancy spontaneously happens when a woman is ready. Kyle insists he's part pony and will nail loudly. He is a major brony and refers to the kindergarten girls who enjoy the show as his pig as sisters. He likes to discuss the show with these four year olds, and gets mad when they don't know it like the back of their hand. It's a weird age. My wife said, the cringiest thing she has seen were two students getting married on the playground. This may not seem that bad but there were dresses, a suit, invitations, thank you letters, the boy's grandma's diamond ring, from a previous marriage, and other students crying at the ceremony. She has been teaching for only 5 years so I'm sure there is a lot more in her future. D. Not a teacher, but once, a kid took his shirt off stood on a desk, and danced. And when the teacher tried to kick him out, he took his pants off and asked the teacher if she wanted the D. The cringiest thing I heard in middle school actually came from a parent. My friend's mom was giving me a ride home with my friend and started preaching about God and whatnot. 
Friends mom, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you, you feel it, in your heart, friend, mom. What about the kid who got hit by a car while walking in the crosswalk last week and died? Friends mom, well, that's what happens when you don't accept Jesus into your heart. Edit, double typed a word. Not a teacher. But in middle school I used to memorize the hand signs and the Japanese names of the jutsus from Naruto, and pretend to be Naruto. The only problem is that I did it during class, and I had absolutely no friends. Also I went to a private Catholic school that thought Naruto was demonic or something. AWW buddy, wasn't there, didn't do that. But I think I seen you back there talking to yourself making hand sins. I didn't talk to you. But I remember thinking it was cool that you had your own little world to escape to. Not a teacher but I was in middle school two years ago. There was a kid who thought the final exams were a waste of time. And he wanted to drop out of school one day so he could become a Minecraft FNAF Yautaber. He talked to the teachers about video games every day. This was in the 8th grade. Hi, I've got 5th year seniors who still think that's the road to their own mansion. I watched a large boy wearing sweatpants shake a turd down his leg and out onto the hallway floor. He was in junior high and barely potty trained. Obviously he had some issues. Overprotective parents chief among them. Put damn does that stand out as a day in my career. Oh boy do I have some stories. Not a teacher but I do have some cringy moments from my time as a student. A girl asked a boy out in grade 7. He looked her up and down and told her that he wasn't into boys. He wasn't being mean he really thought that she was a boy. One boy split his pants picking something up and he was wearing pink pocket at undies. He moved away a month later. Sorry Harry, a guy brought his brand new phone to school. Ended up getting peer pressured into looking up porn in class. Teacher grabbed the phone off him looked at the porn and that afternoon rang the kid's parents. Poor kid ended up losing the phone and was grounded for a month. Sad to say but I have heaps of stories from my schooling years. Unfortunately I have several about myself too. Edit. Bullet points. One kid tried to take on a group of bullies with only the power of God and anime on his side. Not a teacher but in the 6th grade, there was a girl who pretended every time she put this old necklace she had found on she became possessed, and her friends would play along and try to rip it off of her to protect her. These girls also claimed they were witches, and would bring crystals bought at the pagan shop downtown to school and try to do spells. Not a teacher but one of my moments in school. I inadvertently said my dad was half black and half white while really he's just really Italian. Not a teacher but happened while I was at work. I work part time for a party service so we essentially only go to children's birthday parties. The kids were in the 11-15 range. A group of them was playing Minecraft and one kid, who looked to be about 13-14, screamed haha, I named my guy poop, he had made a news box avatar. Then, during their voxel based adventures, he kept asking his friends to help him build a poop statue, write the words poop and butthole in the ground etc. He had this weird obsession with all things poop and poop related. It wouldn't be that bad if he was 8, but the kid couldn't have been younger than 13 tops. I just kind of cringed internally for a second then went back to browsing Reddit. To be fair, he seemed like he was a bit on the spectrum, but it was still cringy to say the least. I asked my middle school teacher, in front of the whole class, if she was a lesbian. She was telling a story involving her girlfriend and, having only moved from England to California a month before, I wasn't aware of that language difference. 
Edit. If you like that story, the same week I asked my art teacher for a rubber. She said, why do you want a condom? Sp Colin. I never saw that coming. That was a real WTF just happened for 13 yo me. I learned to use the word eraser from then on. I got more. Edit 3. For some life and social awareness course we had to take we talked about race relations. I used the term black people and some kids said you can't say black. It's racist. Me. Okay. What do you say here then? Him. African American. I literally laughed out loud because in my head I was thinking well what do you call people who look like African Americans when they're from France or somewhere? Can I use black then? Can I use black when describing a t-shirt or is it African American color? Yeah that was uncomfortable. Never got the chance to explain myself on that one. Some of those kids probably thought I actually was racist. Edit. Removed the word. Hi. Confused people. For good reason. I teach 8th grade. Had a girl come in with literal claw marks across her face. Turns out she and another student got into a fight. Over a guy. It's always over a guy. Other student clawed her across the face. Girls always have the worst fights. Scratch his butt or shove his hand down his pants and smell it and try to make others smell it. I also posted a few days ago about a student that asked me why wouldn't Native Americans just be white I responded why can't you just be black. People on Reddit didn't believe it actually happened but oh it did. BTW she did not ask in a genuine curious way but a judgmental and dismissive way. She loved to bring up her parents Mick Mansion whenever she could. Not a teacher, but I was doing a bit of social service in the middle school I went to. It's part of the college program I attend to. I went to give a memo to a female teacher. And she came down a step and one of her breasts came slightly off and a student just went to his underpants as fast as his could. It was way too much for everyone. Why would a kid would masturbate at the first sight of breasts was my first thought. But then I remember he was a kid seeing boobs for the first in real life. One of her breasts came slightly off, her alien suit not fitting right. Five years ago in middle school I was tricked by my friend into bringing a bathing suit to school to change into because of an activity he made up but later that day I trusted a far too much and narrowly avoided being the guy who shit his pants. Because of that spare set of trunks I brought. He saw it in a dream and didn't dare to say anything to you for fear of being labeled as crazy and you're just insanely lucky I don't know. Not a teacher, sorry, a guy I went to school with, Mike, decided to give himself the nickname Mr. Noss as in nitrous oxide. This was about the time Too Fast Too Furious was not long out and Need for Speed Underground was also new. Honestly, he was skinny geeky kid, exactly the person you're picturing that would try to give himself a nickname got in trouble one day for carving Mr. Noss into his desk. He also claimed he had a PSP months before it was released and his uncle worked for Sony. It was in his bag but he wasn't allowed to show it to anyone. The other one was the kid who thought he was a motorbike and would make motorbike noises when he walked around. Think he was autistic or something, but still cringy. Not a teacher, I'm a student. Let's see what cringy shit my classmates did. Maybe I'll remember something I did. This shit all happened in 6th grade science, 1-2, and 8th grade language arts, 3, 1. Science teacher talks about art cleavage. Every time she said the word, people laughed and giggled until she told them they had 10 seconds to scream the word, and to stop laughing at it. Two. We somehow managed to get to the topic of incest in class. While the one kid was talking about incest, he was masturbating. I sat right across from him. The two girls at our table were equally as weirded out. 3. 
8th grade language arts teacher talks about how black people acted at a basketball game she once went to. She said hey niggas so many times. The one black kid in the class was laughing his ass off. We somehow managed to get to the topic of incest in class. While the one kid was talking about incest, he was masturbating. I sat right across from him. The two girls at our table were equally as weirded out. Getting way off topic probably resulted in 9 stroke 10 memorable moments in school. Never became a teacher but did volunteer time at a middle school working on my education degree. Knew a student with different t-shirts with different days of the week labeled on them. That kid would never wear the right shirt on the right day. On Tuesday he might have a Thursday shirt on. Wednesday he'd wear Monday, and so on. When I asked him why, he told me it was no fun to wear them on the right days. I don't really find it to be cringy. Is it juvenile? Yes but they are in middle school. You can't expect them to be a star citizen. Not a teacher, still in high school but I'm good friends with a few middle schoolers. They invited me to a party once and warned me about a boy who'd be there who's really annoying. The first thing he said to me was hi I'm gay and he kept saying oh fuck me in the ass every 5 minutes. So many of a kid who wore a furry vest every day for about a month, insisting it was high fashion the kid who wore a plunger on his head the kid who put himself into lockers for quiet time the kids who did shots of salt. The kid who carried a haircut dummy around with her everywhere the kid who barked like a dog and ran after fire engines the kid who cried when he didn't have candy in his lunchbox. I will add more if I think of them.